Well, this is it. It's my bush kitchen. There's something very nice about setting up outdoors to cook your tucker. I've just thrown this together now, probably in about 10 minutes. It's fun cooking outdoors, and for some reason, the food just tastes better. So today, on the menu, surprise, 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 is wild pork. I've got this nice bit of wild pork. It was hunted by Dan Shan, and uh, I did the whole pig, and I saved every bit of it. As you can see, it's fat. And this here is, uh, oh, I'd say it's off the thigh, that big bone here. It's certainly not a hock, is it? So it's a working muscle, it won't be tender like a bit of backstrap, but we'll chop it up and we'll make it taste good. And with it, I've got some vegetables I've taken out of the garden right now, all my own stuff, except for the tomatoes, everything else is mine. And um, yeah, the tomatoes and the mushroom, the rest is all, was all my own produce. That's all the pork we got out of that piece of meat on the bone and that will be quite a tough meat and for that reason we're going to cook it in apple cider vinegar to break it down. Going to heat that up, it's got a little bit of oil in it but I'm going to actually put this in here and one day I hope to make my own apple cider vinegar. This is going to do two things, it's going to make the meat tender, break it down, but it's also going to add flavour because we're going to add to it some of this, some soy sauce and soy goes really well with apple cider vinegar. I'm going to slide that into the pot and let it just do its thing in there, pop that on, come back in five minutes when it's heated up and give it a good old mix up. If you don't stick any other ingredients in as far as vegetables go, at least make sure you get your spring onion and your garlic in. So far the dish has had about six minutes in the pot, or the wok at least. Good chomping. On top of this we're going to put some mushrooms. Mushrooms taste good with meat but they're good for you as well. I love to use mushrooms with anything that's wild. It really adds to it. A couple of tomatoes chopped up and when you chop them up and you cook them that's how you really get the lycopene out of them, which is actually an anti-carcinogenic substance proven to slow down prostate cancer in men. How about that? Check it out. Google it if you want to find out more about that. That is broccoli out of my garden, and as you can see, it's just about ready to, uh, to flower. We got it just in time. It's fresh. It'll taste good. Look at the whole difference. Suddenly some green. Boom changes the whole colour of it and makes it look and somehow even smell and taste better. Colour is so important in food, eh? But that's chopped borage. And borage is really good in stews, casseroles and also stir fries. But you don't want to eat too much because it can be toxic if you have too much. Silver beet and kale. It's really important to taste as you go along with tucker. Trouble is, if you taste as you go along right through it, by the time the meal is cooked, sometimes you've lost your appetite. Now the pork is still tough. It needs to break down a little bit more with that. Not much more. It's actually not bad. Another five, ten minutes with that apple cider vinegar and it'll break it down more. We're now going to smash in some soy sauce and we do this before we add salt because it makes it salt here so we'll taste again and then we we'll decide whether you add salt after the soy is already in there so add your soy then your salt. The stalks of the beetroot we'll put the leaf in last and that'll go in with a little bit more silver beet and our coriander and the actual leaf itself of the beetroot plant because I don't want those to break down too much Right, that's it, another five minutes, we're going to do the taste test. And uh, if it's not salty enough, we'll add salt. I've got some nice rock salt there. Oh, she's looking good. She is looking good. So we've got a bit of uh, mushroom, some pork, and I think it's a bit of kale. Oh, I'm so hungry. 
yesterday I ate fish with my son and that was awesome. That was uh, 24, 25 hours ago. So, oh. It's absolutely delicious, but it's missing something. Apple. It's missing, it needs apple. If you're on a keto diet, you wouldn't use a lot of apple because it's got a lot of sugar in it. And I'll probably put half an apple in. We're on an orchard here, got heaps of apples. I'm going to go and grab an apple. Granny Smith, and we're going to put some Granny Smith apple on that. Probably hard. I'll see, but that's going to cook a bit longer. And I'm going to add the apple. That's what's missing. Actually, I might put the whole apple in because there's a lot of food there. Yep. Doesn't need any more salt, it's perfect. Just needs that little bit of sweetness. Ta-da! Known as the Granny Smith apple. This is gonna be the game changer. just about ready I'm gonna add some last minute ingredients and I've picked these bits of lettuce here lettuce actually cooked is nice if you just let it sort of maybe have about 10 or 20 seconds just to break it down soft so it doesn't go too soft I'm gonna turn the gas off now and put my lettuce in just like this before I do I want to put in my beetroot leaf. I'm going to break it up in my hands like this. And also one piece of silver beet. There goes my lettuce on top. And don't forget the coriander, one of my favorites, this dish. And I'm just going to break that up in my hands too. Pile it on there. Oh, it smells good. Leave that stalk out. There's enough in that pan. Oh, the coriander, the smell of coriander coming out now. It's just magic, absolutely magic, real fresh. You can even smell the beetroot leaf. So we're going to serve up and eat because I'm a hungry boy. I really am. There's enough there for when my son comes home tonight for him to have some as well. Because he's a hungry boy as well. Actually, I better leave that for him. Yep. Right, let's tear into it and eat it. Well, there we have it. It's got so many, so many smells and flavours. Coming out strong as the coriander. Also the beetroot leaf, the last ones I put in, of course. And I'm starting to dribble looking at it. I love fat. That's a nice big bit of pig fat. Gonna have it with some tomato, some apple, and a little bit of uh like broccoli and first actual taste of the whole lot together that is exquisite that I will cook again I will do that again now can't really describe the flavour because there's so many flavours in there. You can just get the hint of the garlic coming through. Can't even notice the apple cider vinegar, it's normally quite strong. The apple definitely was important to put in there. It just it just gives that little sweet bite going. It's, it's nice how the soy mixes with the uh, tart apple cider vinegar. The mixture is really nice but then you get that little bit of sweet apple coming on the pork. Mmm. Beetroot leaves, like that on top, last minute, it's almost like beetroot itself, the actual root part. Very earthy, and it goes with it. Now let's find a mushroom with that, because I haven't got into the mushrooms. Where have they disappeared to? They're hiding somewhere. Oh, here we go. Here's a bit of mushroom. 
Let's try a bit of mushroom with a, a bit of pork again. Uh, two mushrooms with a big piece of pork and some, oh, looks like a bit of kale. Are we going to be able to do that without looking like a pig? Oh, next level. I really get a lot of enjoyment out of making these cooking videos and I sort of stopped doing them for a while because they never went very well on my channel but I've decided because I love doing them so much I'm going to do more of them I'm not a good cook I'm just a bloke that makes it up as he goes along I've got no no um, qualifications people say I should make a cookbook I'm, I'm not qualified I only cook you know off I make it up as I go along taste and think about it a bit like creating a song really and I'm, I'm I don't consider myself to be particularly good compared to you know, the professionals out there so that's another reason I didn't make a lot of videos recently because I thought well you know maybe just because I enjoy it someone else doesn't but the thing is I really do enjoy my own cooking uh, occasionally I get it wrong because when you're making stuff up you do I enjoy the creativity of, of adding things as you go along and trying this out and past experience knowing what will work and Sort of sometimes going outside a little bit and trying something different. It's only recently I've started eating beetroot leaves, for example. Uh, it's only very recent I've started eating borage. Now the borage in there, it's broken down and it's really nice. And that's probably what I thought was kale before. There's a bit of borage there on the meat. I mean, you can see that and it shows up, but it's like it was, again, earthy, but it's like it was actually meant to be to go with meat borage. I haven't tried it with fish and to be honest I don't think it'll be that wonderful but it definitely cooks up well this sort of tucker mm. the tomatoes well tomato always goes good with anything whether it's in a hamburger uh, tomatoes on toast with um, say cheese is quite nice uh, but tomatoes complement most dishes and cooked like I said when I was making this the lycopene, which is really, really good for you, comes out, but the flavour comes out, it's very good, and your stomach can deal with tomatoes a lot more. Being from the nightshade family, your stomach likes them when they're cooked better. Mmm. <laughs> this is actually probably the best wild pork dish I've done in a very, very long time. Hello, Pace. You know what we've got left for paste, don't you? Oh, yes. That's what's left the bone. Let me just lift it up. There you go. Away you go. Happy dog. He can chew on that. You know, cooking outdoors and eating outdoors, it just tastes better and it's more fun. So if you get the right weather next time, just put your little gas burner outside, or maybe on the patio, or maybe, I don't know, any space you've got, and uh, tear into it. Pace has got the bone, and Bruno's decided he's going to come over and have a chew on it. Mm -hmm. He's be a scrap in a minute. Where you go, Bruno? Where you go? He's got onto the house truck. Mm -hmm. He's run away with his bone. Who's going to argue with Bruno, eh? <laughs> That'll do, Bruno. Not for you. That'll do. You leave it, Bruno. There'll be a fight in a minute. Not for you, Bruno. Leave it. It's too old to start fighting bloody Pace. Where you go, Bruno? Got to be careful, way eh, with uh, bones and dogs. They'll they'll fight to the death over a bone. It's natural, just like wolves. Hey, look, thanks a lot for joining me. I appreciate you giving up your time and following me and my funny little channel. Oh, it's great that you guys sit down and watch and join me in a meal like this and a cook up. Give any tips below, and I'm always open to being wrong on something and getting advice from someone who knows better, because there's plenty of people out there that do. And add to, to the comment section if you think I could have done something better on this. I'm always you know, ready to learn more. And you give it a crack. Good luck. Good luck harvesting your own meat. However you're doing it. Whether it's the supermarket or going out with a dog and knife. Or shooting it or spearing it or bowing it or trapping it. Or however you get it. I hope it's going well for you. And uh, I'm going to uh, carry on eating this. Where's oh, Bruno's down there now? See him in the, in the shadows down there. He's like, trying to sneak up. And Pace is just about there. Chewing on his bone.
Bruno's giving another crick at it. Not for you, Bruno. Where you go? Where you go? You've already been fed twice today. Fatty. Be good. Can't be good. Be careful. See you in the next one.